Hi, welcome to my class in business mathematics. For today, we will study simple interest or specifically the amount of simple interest at the given simple interest rate. The formula to calculate the amount of simple interest, the amount of interest at simple interest rate is given by the following formula. Capital I equals P multiplied by a small letter I multiplied by P. This is the formula used to calculate the amount of interest at the given interest rate for the principal invested for time t in years. Capital I here is the amount of interest <coughs> or simply interest. The interest can be interpreted depending on which pers perspective are you you are considering for example you borrowed 100,000 pesos from a bank the amount of interest that you will pay to the bank after some period of time is an interest and from your perspective it is the interest you will pay after some time is the payment for the use of the bank's money. But from the perspective of the bank, the interest they will receive from you as payment for your using their money is an income earned. Thus, there are two ways by which we can interpret Capital I or the amount of interest. The amount of interest, capital I, is either the payment for the use of someone else's money or an income earned from some profitable investment. It just depends on which perspective you are considering. In this formula, capital P is the Principal. Principal is the original amount invested. And many people make investments for different reasons and for many reasons. Some people, they invest in their own business because they would like to, to be their own boss. That is, they would not want to follow uh, someone else as a boss. But it is also in this way, investing in some business that one can generate employment or jobs for some people and can be uh, a person who has invested in some business can be economically independent. and. This person uh, can also participate in the global market by marketing their products uh, internationally. And they can compete with products from other countries in, in some trade, international trade. The small i here is the simple interest rate. And the small i is usually given as a rate or as a percentage. The simple interest rate, in using simple interest rate, the amount of interest capital I is computed only once or only one time for the whole period of the investment period. That is the amount of interest capital I at simple interest rate is computed only one time regardless of your period or time of investment. Whether you invest your principal, your money for one year 
or for 10 years at simple interest rate, the amount of interest capital I will be computed only one time for one year or for the whole 10 years. But definitely the amount of simple interest will be much greater than uh, at 10,000 pesos the, the amount of interest at sorry the, the amount of simple interest will be definitely greater than uh, if you invest your money for 10 years then the amount of simple interest when you invest the same amount of money for one year when using this formula to compute the amount of interest capital I the interest rate should be converted to to decimal number. Again, the simple interest rate is given as a percentage. And when you substitute the simple interest rate in this formula, it should be converted to decimal number. And from your course in arithmetic, there are two ways to convert a percentage to decimal number. Either you divide, one way is to divide the given percent or percentage or the given interest rate, simple interest rate by 100% and you cancel the, the percentage sign and you round off your answer to two decimal places. The other way is to simply move the decimal point of the number in, percent, in percentage two places to the left and you have easily converted the given simple interest rate in decimal number by moving the decimal point two places to the left. In this formula, the small t is the time or the period of invest investment. When substituting t in this formula to compute for the amount of simple interest, the, the time should be in years. Thus, if the time is in months, you have to convert it to years uh, by taking one year equals 12 months and multiplying the given time in months by a conversion factor to convert the time in months to years. Also, if you have a time given in certain number of days you have to convert this number of days in years by either taking one year equals 365 days or by taking one year equals 360 days if you take one year equals 365 days the amount of interest computed will be called exact interest because uh, we have exactly 365 days in a year. But if you use one year equals 360 days, the, uh, the interest computed will be called approximate interest because you have used approximate time, that is one year equals approximately 360 days in converting the time in days to year. Again, the formula to compute the amount of simple interest is given by I equals PIT. Where capital I is the amount of simple interest or simply the amount of interest. At the right hand side, capital P is the principal in any monetary unit. Principal is the original amount invested. A small letter I is the simple interest rate given in percentage but when using it in, the, in this formula to compute for the amount of interest, the simple interest rate should be com converted to decimal number. And the small t in this formula is the time of investment or the period of investment. And when substituting the time into this formula, the time should be in years. We will now take some examples in using this formula to compute for the amount of simple interest rate. And you may use calculator for your
computations of the amount of simple interest rate. Uh, sorry, the amount of simple interest or simply amount of interest capital I. For an example, for computing the amount of simple interest, consider the following problem. Maria borrows 17,500 pesos with interest at 5.5% at the end of 3 years. What is the amount of interest to be paid when solving the when solving a problem you should identify all the given information or data identify the unknown and decide which formula to use so the first step that we will do is to write the given information Maria borrows 17,500 pesos and we said earlier that the original amount invested or the original amount borrowed is called the principal. And the principal is denoted by capital P. Hence, in this example, our principal capital P is 17,500 pesos. We write P is equal to 17,500. 500 pesos. The original amount borrowed by Maria is 17,500 pesos. And we denote this original amount borrowed as capital P. It is the principal. And this amount borrowed will earn an interest. And the interest is at 5.5%. In, in a given problem, if, if it is not specified what interest rate, what type of interest rate is involved in the problem, we generally take the interest rate given a simple interest rate. That is, unless otherwise specified, we take the given interest rate in a problem as simple interest rate. Such as in this problem, it is not specified whether 5.5% is a simple interest rate. And if, if it is not specified whether the, the given interest rate is a simple interest rate or other type of interest rates, we take the given interest rate as simple interest rate. And the simple interest rate is denoted by a small i. Small letter i is the amount of, uh, small letter i is the simple interest rate or the rate of simple interest. And in this problem, the simple interest rate is 5.5%. Five and a half percent. Since this is a simple interest rate, the amount of interest required will be computed only one time for the whole duration or for the whole period of investment. Again, when we substitute the simple interest rate into the formula to compute for the amount of interest we should convert this to decimal number. Uh, first, you may convert this mixed fraction into improper fraction by multiplying 2 by 5, that's 10, and adding 1, that's 11. Divide by 2. And 11 divided by 2 is 5.5%. Or you may divide 1 by 2, convert 1 half to decimal number. 1 half is 0.5. And plus 5 here, you get 5.5. 5.5%. is the same as 5.5%. But this is still in percentage 
we should convert it to decimal number. And, and to convert this to decimal number, either you move the decimal point two places to the left. If you move the decimal point two places to the left, you have to add zero. And you count one, add zero, move another decimal point to the left, and two. And you get zero point. 0.055 Move the decimal point two places to the left. 1. Add 0. Move another uh, one decimal point to the left and 2. And you may add uh, 0 before the decimal point. So 5.5% is equal to 0 0.055 or Using your calculator, you simply divide 5.5 by 100%. And you should get 0 0.055. After converting this interest rate to decimal number, you now remove or cancel the percent sign. Because it is now in decimal number. But this decimal number is equal to this percent or this rate. 5.5% and the question is again we need Maria borrow 17,500 pesos that's the principal the original amount borrowed with interest at 5.5% this is the, sim the rate of simple interest or simple interest rate although it's not specified if this is a simple interest rate otherwise uh, if it is not specified whether the given rate is a simple interest rate or other types of rates, interest rates, we generally take the given interest rate as simple interest rate, denoted by small i, and the simple interest rate in percentage should be converted to decimal number. And we did that and we get 0 0.055. And this is the the number or decimal number that we will substitute into a small letter i in the formula. The interest is due at the end of three years. After three years, the Maria will pay the interest computed at 5.5% simple interest rate. So this means the, the, the duration of investment or the the length of time for Maria to the length of time given to Maria to pay the interest is 3 years we write T equals 3 years and the question is what is the amount of interest to be paid the amount of interest we write the required. The amount of interest as we have discussed earlier is denoted by capital I. And this is the required the amount of interest to be paid after three years at five and a half percent for the original amount borrowed of 17,500 pesos. And uh, we write the formula because we are required to compute for the amount of interest. We use the formula for capital I equals principal times the rate of simple interest times the time t and we substitute we substitute the principal 17,500 small interest rate in decimal number 0 0.055 and the time t equals 3 years and we get I, amount of interest equals 17,500 
multiply by interest rate in decimal number, 0 0.055. Multiply by the time in years. The given time is already in years. So we substitute 340. Multiply by 3. And using your calculator, you simply multiply 17,500. Multiply by 0 0.055. Multiply by 3. And you should get this amount, 2,887.5. If you, you will try to multiply this using your calculator, you will get 2,887.5. But we usually give the final answer to, to, decimal, to, decimal, to two decimal places or so that we will know the, the centavos in the, in the amount of interest. So this is the amount that you should get if you use your calculator when you multiply 17,500, multiply by 0 0.055, multiply by 3. And the amount is in pesos. This is the amount that Maria should pay at the end of three years as payment for the interest for the amount she borrowed uh, worth 17,500 pesos. At the end of three years, Maria will, will pay the same amount, 17,500 pesos, plus this amount of interest. We take another example, consider the following problem. Pedro invested 175,000 pesos in a business that pays 4 and one third percent interest after 9 months. What is the interest earned? Again, the first step is to write all the given information and we write them as given. Pedro invested 175,000 pesos. Thus, the original amount invested denoted by capital P or for principal is 175,000 pesos. We write P. The principal in this example is the original amount invested by Pedro. P equals 175,000 pesos. This amount was invested in a business that pays 4 and one third percent interest. Again, the problem does not say that 4 and one third percent is a simple interest rate, but we already agree that if the problem does not specify the type of interest involved in the problem, we generally take the interest rate given as simple interest rate. Thus, we take 4 and 1 third percent as simple interest rate denoted by a small i. A small i equals 4 and 1 third percent. As in example 1, when substituting the simple interest rate into the formula, the simple interest rate given in percentage must be con should be converted to decimal number. So we should convert 4 and 1 third percent to, to decimal number. If you divide 1 by 3, or if you convert 1 third to decimal number, you would get uh, a non-terminating repeating decimal number. And this will be equal to 4.5. 333% 1 divided by 3 is 0.33333 without end 3 is repeated without end This is an example of a non-terminating repeating decimal number Again 1 over 3 is 0.3333 without end plus 4 that's why we get 4.33333 and it's still in percentage. 
and to convert this to to decimal number you divide 4.333 without end by 100% and omit or cancel the percent sign and you would get a small i now is 0 0.04 333. If you are using calculator, when you press 4.3333, you press 3 in your calculator repeatedly. Do not just press 1 or 2 or 3 threes. Press 3 repeatedly in your calculator. So you press 4.3333 and then you divide it by 100 and you should get 0 0.43333. Again, 3 is repeated without end. Now, to avoid writing 3 repeatedly without end, we usually use the convention 0 0.043 bar. Instead of writing many 3s in this non-terminating repeating decimal number, we simply write 0 0.043 bar. The bar here above 3 indicates that the digit 3 is repeated without n. But in your calculator when you press, when you compute for the interest, amount of interest, you should press 0 4 and many 3's repeatedly. The next given is the time. The time is 9 months. That is the interest on 175,000 pesos is, will be computed at the rate of 4 and one third percent after 9 months. After 9 months, this amount invested will earn an interest at 4 and one third percent. So, 9 months, thus 9 months since the time. The length of time for which the original amount invested of 175,000 pesos will earn an interest at 4 and 1 third percent or 0 0.043333. So, T is 9 months. But we said earlier that when, sub, when substituting the, the time into the formula for computing the amount of interest, the time should be in years. But in this example, the time is given in months. Thus, we have to convert 9 months to year by using the equivalent 1 year equals 12 months. To convert 9 months to year, we multiply 9 months by a conversion factor. T equals 9 months. Multiply it by conversion factor. A conversion factor is a fraction. And we obtain the fraction from the given equivalent units. 1 year equals 12 months. To cancel months, we write 12 months in the denominator and 1 year in the numerator. Or 1 year equals 12 months. One year over 12 months is what you call a conversion factor. And months will cancel out from the numerator. From the numerator and denominator. And you divide 9 by 12. Using your calculator, you can check. 9 divided by 12 is 0 0.75 year. Our time now is in year. And our time is less than 1. Because our time is only 9 months. Less than, less than 12 months in a year. 
and the required is what is the interest earned we are we the problem is asking for the amount of interest earned after 9 months on 175 pesos 175,000 pesos invested at 4 and one third percent simple interest rate thus the formula that the required we write first the required the amount of interest earned is denoted by capital I and the formula to use to compute for the amount of interest capital I is I equals PIT the amount of interest is denoted by capital I capital I is given by PIT where P is the principal, 175,000 pesos. I is the simple interest rate, for and one third percent converted to decimal number, 0 0.043333, 3 is repeated without end. And the time is 9 months converted in year, 0 0.75 year. We will now substitute the principal interest rate and time to compute for the amount of interest earned. We now compute the amount of interest earned using the formula I equals PIP. We substitute the principal is 175,000 pesos. The interest earned is, sorry, the interest rate in decimal number is zero. 0 0.043333 without n, 3 is repeated without n. Multiply by time in year. The given time is 9 months in year, it is equal to 0 0.75 year. And use your calculator. In your calculator, you press 175,000 and multiply by 0 0.043333 you press 3 repeatedly in your calculator then multiply by 0 0.75 to two decimal places you should get 5687.50 pesos or depending on the number of digits that can be displayed in your calculator, you may get 5687.4999. You may get 5687.4999. 9 is repeated without N. But you round it up, you round this up to two decimal places. And you should get 5,687.50 pesos. This is the amount of interest earned on the investment made by Pedro after 9 months. His 175,000 pesos will earn 5,687.50 pesos after 9 months at the given simple interest rate of 4 and one third percent. For your exercise, please try the following problem. Lily borrowed 68,000 pesos with interest at 7 and 3 fourths. 7 and 3 fourths percent at the end of one and a half years. What amount should be paid for interest? You write first the given information. The given are 68,000 pesos, 7 and 3 fourths percent, which should be converted to two decimal, to decimal number. You divide 3 by 4 plus 7 percent. And then divide that by 100 percent to convert to decimal number. One and a half years is given. You divide one by two, that's 0.5, plus one. So one and a half years is equal to 1.5 years. What amount should be paid for interest? The required is the amount of interest, capital I. And you should use this formula, I 
formula for computing the amount of interest or the interest earned, capital I equals PIT, where P is the principal, small i is the simple interest rate, and T is the time in years. If you have question about the lesson today, you ask your question in the comments below. In the next lesson, we will take uh, more examples for using this formula for computing the amount of interest at simple interest rate. But we will have a time, an example that makes use of exact time and approximate time. And thank you for being in this class today.